What's up, everybody? Good Sunday morning. Obviously, we got some football today to watch, but uh, the Seahawks are not going to be involved today, so I figure let's take the opportunity to debunk some myths about the Seattle Seahawks, because there is one myth going around about the Seattle Seahawks right now, and it absolutely needs to be debunked, because not only is it just plain wrong, it's also dangerous. Not real life dangerous, but football fandom dangerous, because it sends the wrong message and it implies the wrong thing. So what I'm talking about is this narrative that the Seahawks defense is really good and they only produce bad numbers because the offense makes them tired because the offense goes three and out every time they get the ball. And not only is it wrong, like factually, emphatically, empirically wrong to say that, I say it's dangerous, again, not real life dangerous, but football fandom dangerous, because quite frankly, it's giving this team and giving this roster and giving this coaching staff credit they don't deserve. And if we go into future seasons with that mentality, thinking the defense is totally fine, we just need to fix the offense... Well, we're, we're not going to fix the defense that desperately needs it. So I pulled up the play-by-play -play chart, the really the drive chart, for every game the Seahawks have played so far this year, except for the Giants and the Cardinals, because those were two games where the defense basically didn't give up anything, right? Like, those were two games where the defense was pretty much 100% on point. Uh, they gave up effectively nothing to the Giants, and what they gave up to the Cardinals was mostly off a short field. So let's take a look and see if these statements hold up to scrutiny because so many people say this, right? So many people say some version of the Seahawks defense is really good. It just gets hung out to dry by the offense, never doing anything. So many people say it that you could almost assume that it has to be true. Why else would they say it, right? Well, sometimes things just get said over and over and over again, and some people think that it's true because everyone's saying it. It has to be true, right? Yeah, let's uh, take a look at some of these drive charts. We're going to start way back in week one. We're going to go through most of the games the Seahawks have played so far this year, and we're going to see if the statement holds up to any degree of scrutiny. Week one. This is week one. So the Seahawks' first drive of the season... 12 plays, more than five minutes, they kick a field goal. That's the first drive of the season. The defense has not played a single meaningful drive the whole season. They played preseason a little bit, and then they've done whatever they've done in camp. So this is the first defensive drive of the season. The first real defensive drive the Seahawks have played since the playoff game against the 49ers. And what do they do? 16 plays. Nine minutes plus, they give up a touchdown. Is the defense tired now? Is the defense tired on the first defensive drive of the season? What's going on here, guys? Is our defense out of shape? Is our entire defense made up of players who have no endurance? Like they're tired running out of the tunnel at the start of the game? Next Seahawks drive, 12 plays, touchdown. The Seahawks offense is actually kind of smoking right now. And then we see a Rams three and out, the one really good defensive drive the Seahawks had this game. And then the Seahawks go down and kick a field goal. So at this point, the Seahawks have had three successful offensive drives. They have gotten points on all three drives. Two of the drives have taken 12 plays. One of them took six, a little bit shorter, but still... They're moving the ball, they're picking up yards, they're scoring, and then the very next time the Rams get the ball, they go down the field, get into scoring position, and are only prevented from scoring by a blocked field goal. Then the Seahawks go down for another scoring drive, get into field goal range, miss it because Jason Myers has decided, I don't know, he's, he's cool now because he got his money, and the Rams get the ball back, drive down. And then at the start of the second half, they do it again. 10 plays, 76 yards. So to recap here, not only has the Seahawks defense been supplemented 
with an offense that has either gotten points or had a missed field goal on every single drive, they just had a 12 to 15 minute halftime period to rest up and they just gave up another 10 yard drive. Now, the rest of this game, maybe so. The Seahawks defense fizzled out. They lost their offensive linemen to injuries and they gave up a lot of long drives. Maybe so. Maybe there's a little bit of that at play here, but there was nothing good about the way this defense was playing before that happened. So I'm not seeing that come into play here. I've seen Seahawks defenses do exactly what you're talking about. Go through the whole game, balling out, killing people, and the offense never shows up to support them, and by the end of the game, they're tired. That's not what's happening here. Let's go over to our next game. Seahawks play the Lions. First drive of the game, Seahawks get the ball, go down, score a touchdown. 12 plays, 8 minutes off the clock. Everybody's feeling good. We're playing in a dome. What does the Seahawks defense do? Do they force a three and out because they have all their energy and they're a great defense and they're feeling good and they're, they're, they're just, everything's cool now because, hey, the offense scored a touchdown. They took eight minutes off the clock. We're ready to go. Touchdown. Seven plays, 75 yards, three minutes. Boom. Tie game. All right. Next drive, Seahawks punt. Lions go down the field again. This time we get a turnover on downs, but they still take up 12 plays, more than six minutes. Nobody's tired here. This is the first quarter. If you're tired in the first quarter, even if your offense is hanging you out to dry with three and outs, if you're tired in the first quarter, you don't need to be playing professional football. You need to hit a treadmill or something. Seahawks have another semi-successful drive, go down, get in field goal range, miss the field goal. Seahawks defense goes back out on the field, immediately gives up a touchdown. And... There's a little bit of a back and forth with punts here, a little bit of stuff going on here, but the Seahawks don't actually give up any points in this sequence, so we can't blame that on that. And then you get down into the kind of second half here where things kind of went back and forth crazy, and there is going to be a little element of the defense got tired, but that's only really coming into play here with the pick six by Trey Brown, because when you get a pick six, your defense does literally have to go right back out on the field. So that touchdown that they give up after the pick six by Trey Brown may be a little understandable. But at the end of the day, a vast majority of the Lions' points were scored in situations where there's no getting tired. This is game two. This is week two. It's not happening. Seahawks-Panthers, very next week, week three. Seahawks offense starts the game with a three and out, but guess what? The defense hasn't seen the field yet, so they've got their energy, right? They're not tired. They're good to go. They're going to whoop butt. They're playing this terrible Carolina team. Everything's good, right? They're going to force a three and out right back. 11 plays, 50 yards, over five and a half minutes off the clock. They kick a field goal. Not off to a bad start here. So Seahawks offense then goes on to have a lot of success. 10 play drive, taking off four minutes. Eight play drive, taking off four minutes. Six play drive, taking off two minutes. All these drives end in points. All these drives end in field goals. I know we prefer touchdowns, but these are successful drives. Is the defense good? Is the defense cool? No, not really. They give up a 75 play, a yard, eight play touchdown drive. So, um, yeah, I'm not really seeing where the defense is getting hung out to dry here. Even in the second half, you can see these long, successful offensive drives, and the defense lets them answer. So, yeah, I'm not really seeing it come into play here. I got to be honest here. I mean, look at this. Seahawks defense, offense, excuse me, nine plays, kicks the field goal. Carolina gets it back, has a rel relatively successful drive. Seven plays, miss a field goal. And then Seattle scores a touchdown, eight plays, takes up more than four minutes. Defense should be good now, right? The offense helped them out. No, nine play, 75 yards, touchdown, four minutes. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing this statement hold up to scrutiny. A few weeks later, we play the Bengals. Ultimate example here, the Bengals did basically all their scoring on the first two drives of the game. Seahawks go down six minutes, 11 plays, score a touchdown. Bengals, 13 play, touchdown drive of their own. Seahawks go three and out. Bengals score another long touchdown drive, 73 yards, more than three minutes off the clock. It was only after those two touchdowns that the defense locked down. So, if anything, I think I'm finding more evidence to the opposite. 
the more the Seahawks offense struggles, the better the defense seems to do. Because early on here, we actually had a very successful first drive, and then we immediately gave up two long touchdown drives. And then when the offense fell into a little bit of a rut later on and was struggling to get anything going, then we actually had a lot of success. Then the defense was coming in big time. So, wait, this statement is not holding up to scrutiny. We can go to the Browns game. Seahawks offense comes out smoking. And so does the defense, too. They force an early three and out. They get a turnover. They get another turnover. Yeah, things are good, but look at these drives by the Seahawks offense. Eight plays, touchdown. Six plays, touchdown. Six plays, field goal. And then we see one three and out. The defense has barely been on the field. They had one semi-long drive that was not that long. It was only five plays. And then you start to see the wheels come off. 10-play drive luckily ends in an interception. 11-play drive ends in a touchdown. And I'm, I'm just looking at all this stuff, and I'm not seeing any reason to believe there's a correlation between the defense wilting and the offense not supporting them. Like, it, it seems to me to be more random than anything, but I feel like I could almost do a better job proving the opposite correlation here. Like... Later in this game, yeah, the Seahawks offense fell into a little bit of a rut, and they did give up a couple of scores to Cleveland in the second half, but really, if you look at it, they only scored two field goals in that second half when the offense went to sleep. Early in the game, when the Seahawks offense came out on fire, look at what the, Brown, the Browns actually did most of their scoring in that first half. So again, I'm just not seeing any evidence. The one game that people who say these things will always point to is, of course, the Ravens game, where the Seahawks punted the ball the first three times they got it, three plays, five plays, six plays, and then the Seahawks defense, which started out fairly good, wilted. They uh, had a 12-play uh, touchdown drive, then they forced a fumble, then there was a 10-play touchdown drive, and then there was another fumble, and then there was the field goal drive. This is the one game where I look at it and I go, yeah, the offense needs to help the defense out. At the same time, though, I've seen defenses hold up much longer than one quarter. Like, how long did it take for the Ravens offense to get going here? It wasn't like it happened at the end of the fourth quarter. No, it happened, what, late in the first, early in the second? Like, I'm, I'm not seeing even the, even in this game, I really don't think... The defense deserves anywhere near as much credit as they seem to get for holding up for the first two drives of the game. But this is the one game that I look at and go, okay, there's a, definitely a little bit of truth to this. Okay, let's go Seahawks Commanders. Let's go a little bit later here. So Washington gets the ball first. First drive of the game, touchdown. They put up six only because they missed the extra point. Again, I got to ask, is our defense, like, tired here? Is the defense really just that gassed and they can't, uh, it, 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 again, did they run out of the tunnel and get so winded they couldn't play defense on the first drive? And then I'm going ahead to this second, uh, second half here where Washington did most of their damage in that fourth quarter with the two touchdowns they scored. I'm looking at Seattle goes 11 plays, takes off almost five minutes, scores a field goal, and then Seattle gives up the touchdown. And then Seattle goes 10 plays, takes more than four minutes off the clock, and then the defense gives up a touchdown. So even on that level, I know it's the end of the game, and I know Seattle's offense did have some struggles here. They did have a couple of short drives earlier in that second, uh, second half. I'm not seeing where the offense is not helping out the defense. I'm seeing the offense bail out the defense, really. Like, I think that would be a better term here. Like, I'm not, I mean, you are going to have three and outs occasionally. The offense should not have to have a 10-play drive every time they touch the ball just so the defense can be competent. By the way, we mostly had successful drives in the first half. Most of our drives were at least somewhat successful. So why is the defense getting worn out here? The answer is, they're not. There is no, oh, they're just getting tired because the offense goes three and out every time they get the ball. It it's not happening. It's just untrue. It's hap It happened once or twice in a certain game, and then it happened a bunch in the Ravens game. 
and everybody kind of extrapolated it out. So let's let's look at even this Rams game where yeah, the offense needs to do better. I would say that it's hard when you lose your quarterback for three key drives late, but whoever it may be, the offense needs to do better. I'm looking at this late first half touchdown drive where the drive chart before then was three and out for the Rams, six plays, long drive, but they go for it on fourth down in the red zone and don't get it, and then three and out. So the defense has been on the field for 12 plays, and the Seahawks offense has basically played as good as can reasonably expected. 14 plays, long touchdown drive, 15 plays, field goal, six plays, field goal. They have scored every time they touch the ball. The Two of their drives have been extremely long. They basically took up the entire first half with these drives. And then the defense hits the field, gives up a long touchdown drive right before the end of the half. Are they tired? Did the offense not support them enough? Does the offense need to score 20 points every possession in order to support this defense? Yeah, it's, it's not happening. At the end of the game, maybe it happened a little bit. Obviously, the offense had big problems in that second half. But there is nothing about this drive right here that had anything to do with the offense shortcomings. The offense was excellent in that first half at keeping the ball. 49ers game, another great example. First drive of the game, you run out the tunnel, you take the field. Niners, shove it down your throat. Nine plays, touchdown, five minutes. And again, I got to ask, where's the tiredness? Later in this game, maybe there was a little bit of that. But again, I want to point this out. The Niners did most of their scoring in the first half. They put up 24 points in the first half, and they only put up uh, seven in the second half. So if the problem is they're getting tired, that's something we should be seeing in the second half. Not touchdown, long drive punt, another touchdown, three and out, long touchdown, punt, and then there's a short drive field goal. Like, why are they scoring all their points early in the game if the problem is the defense is worn out? If the defense is worn out that early in the game, we have a conditioning problem at the very least. But I think the real problem is the defense is just bad. Cowboys Seahawks. I mean, if this game did not teach you that the um, original assumption is wrong, then I don't know what to tell you. First drive of the game. 14 plays, Cowboys kick a field goal. Seahawks get a quick touchdown, Cowboys get a touchdown. Nine play drive results in a missed field goal because Jason Myers does his stupid thing, Cowboys touchdown. Cowboy, uh, Seahawks answer with a long touchdown drive, Cowboys respond with a long drive of their own and a field goal. Cow Seahawks double dip, eight play touchdown drive, 10 play touchdown drive. Defense should have a ton of energy right now, right? They had the half break. They had two long offensive drives. The defense has been chilling for almost half an hour now. What do they do? They give up a 12-play touchdown drive. So where is the, oh, they were tired because the offense kept going three and out. It's not their fault because they run 100 plays every game and the offense only runs like 20. It doesn't exist. It's a myth. So... That's almost every game we played this year, guys. Myth busted. I'm sorry. We're busting myths. We are debunking lies. And this notion that the defense is only bad because of the offense, it's a lie. And I'm going to say it again. It's a dangerous lie because it is giving this team credit for something that they're not good at. It is assuming competency and quality play in an area where we are not getting it. Yes, the offense has a problem staying on the field sometimes. Yes, the third down conversion rate is bad, but guess what? You know what else is bad? The defense third down conversion rate. We have the fourth worst third down defense in the NFL. 45% of our third downs against us get converted. So if your issue with the Seahawks is that we run too many plays on defense, part of it's on the defense as well because they give up too many third downs. 45%. That's embarrassing. So I just had to lay down the law here because I see this comment so much and it's not just a flawed way of thinking. It's not just an oversimplification. It's wrong. Like there is no real evidence to indicate it. There have been a few moments this year where the offense was failing and the defense suffered because of it. But 
they're few and far between, and they're far outweighed by the times when the defense had every reason to be able to execute because they got support from the offense or they got support from the circumstance and couldn't do it because they're just bad. I'm sorry, this defense is bad. They're bad in any situation. They're bad at the start of the game. They're bad at the end of the game. They're bad in the middle. They're bad when the offense goes down for a long drive. They're bad when the offense goes three and out. They're just bad. And pretending otherwise is not going to help anything. So hopefully I gave you guys something to think about. If you thought this defense was only bad because the offense hangs them out to dry, I'm telling you right now, the drive chart proves that's not the case. All right, I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Enjoy football today and something to think about, guys. Something to think about that needs to be thought about.